Okay, we've had some questions about velocity vectors. Um, this is another one we've done early in the year. Um, here is a river with a uh, current flowing in this direction. We've got a canoe crossing the river and we're given three pieces of information. Number one, it says the canoe crosses the stream at three meters per second. So that would be a direction in this case that way. Uh, the current is four meters per second downstream. So we'll label this four meters per second. And we also know that the stream is 15 meters wide. So uh, this distance here is uh, 15 meters. Okay, so a couple of questions we could ask from this. Number one would be um, how long uh, does it take the canoe to cross the stream? So how long to cross the stream? We're talking about a time. We also want to ask um, how far downstream is the canoe when it lands on the opposite shore. Because we can we get an idea here that the canoe is going to be paddling straight across, but it's going to drift downstream. So we're going to end up with some kind of uh, resultant velocity that's going to take us in this direction. And remember, we did two ways of solving for the resultant. We measured using a ruler, uh, which is one way to do it. It's easier to use uh, the other method, which is the Pythagorean theorem. Um, and you can find the resultant velocity because we create right here a right triangle, uh, two right triangles in fact, and we know the length of one side and the other side so we can use a squared plus b squared equals c squared in order to figure that out. So that'll be our third question. What is resultant velocity? Okay, so first how long is it going to take to cross the stream? Well, uh, I don't know. Let's see. Three meters per second is how fast this thing's going across. And what distance does it have to cover? 15 meters. So um, if we want to know how long, we're trying to solve for t. And we're just going to rearrange our equation velocity equals distance over time to be time equals distance divided by velocity. Here's the distance, 15 meters. Here's the vertical uh, velocity, 3 meters per second. So how long does it take? Five seconds, okay? How about how far downstream does this thing go? Well, now that we know how long it takes the canoe to get across the stream, we can try to figure out how far downstream it's gonna go. And every second it's in the water, it's gonna drift four meters downstream. So it's gonna be uh, something like this. One, two, three, four, five, like that. And each second it takes to go across will take four seconds, uh, four meters downstream. So here we say the distance downstream is going to equal the downstream velocity times the time. All right, time we said was five, the downstream velocity is four meters per second. So four meters per second times five seconds is going to be 20 meters. That's how far down. So this distance in this direction would be 20 meters. Okay, how far downstream? And then lastly, what's the resultant velocity? Uh, if we paddle across the stream at 3 meters per second, but we drift downstream at 4 meters per second, what is our actual velocity? Well, here we would say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a, we'll say, is 3 squared, which I'm just going to go ahead and say 9, because that's what 3 squared is. 4 squared is 16, equals c squared, which is 25. If c squared is 25, that means c is going to be the square root of 25, which is 5 meters per second. All right, and that's the resultant velocity right here, uh, 5 meters per second. Okay, now another question that we didn't write, but will the boat get across the, the channel faster because of the downstream velocity? Uh, and the answer to that is no. The boat will still take five seconds to get across this river, even if uh, there's a very fast downstream current. The boat will be traveling faster because in addition to its vertical cross-stream velocity, it's also drifting downstream. So the resultant velocity is five meters per second, but the cross-stream velocity, three meters per second, is still intact. Remember that a resultant velocity is the combination of two velocity vectors, one in this case cross stream, one downstream. It's the combination of the both 
but both of these are still true. They're still both apparent. Um, so a little bit complicated, but that's the truth about vectors. I hope you believe it.